So in this session, uh, we are going to talk about, again, we are going to touch the at all the wired annotation, but this time with a uh, setter methods, you know, and, and with the second type of injection point. So with constructors, as you remember, the Spring IOC container had to chose uh, between one of the constructors and had to call one of them to instantiate the class. So let me first get rid of all of these. And so, but there is one other injection point that we could use and that is setter methods. And we could also have a bunch of methods that are annotated with at auto wire. So the spring will first call one of the constructors and then we'll look at all the methods that are annotated and we'll try to satisfy them. So let's add one here. Let's say we have public void set your box and ask for gearbox this dot gearbox. Okay. Now the gearbox is a component. So there is a bean definition and the IOC container could satisfy it, could satisfy this parameter here. But let's say that we want Spring to call this after calling the constructor. So in order to do that, we have to annotate it with at auto wire. And let's add this statement here that says setting uh, gearbox. <clears throat> and if you run it, you will see that uh, first the constructor was called and then the, the, the setter method was called and the, the instance of the car then was provided, you know, to the user. So <clears throat> we could have as many as uh, these setter functions as we want. You know, we could have another one for the engine and annotated it with the auto wired as well. Setting engine. Okay. And, and because, because now we have annotated the setter method with out of wire, and because the default uh, required value is true, the default one, it, it, it has to resolve the parameters of the, of the setter methods. And because the engine is not a component and there is no bean definition, it was failed, you know, but now, if you run it again, you will see that uh, first the constructor was called and then setting the gearbox and then setting the engine. So we could have as many as a setter function as we like. Also, the number of the parameters doesn't matter. Actually, we could uh, merge these two into a single function and Tell it that set a gearbox and engine. So you will see that it will call that set setter methods, you know, and the number of the parameters doesn't matter. So it is not like that you, you have to only have a single parameter. And also the name of the method doesn't matter at all. So it doesn't have to be set something. And that could be give me uh, my dependencies or anything, you know. And if you run it, it will succeed again. The other thing that I have to mention here is that this visibility modifier does not matter again, like the constructor, you know, the constructor is private here. It could be private, protected, whatever. And it will be called by the spring, you know. But the same caveat that we have with the constructor injection holds here as well uh, because if we have private or pr protected uh, constructor or setter method and then that would only be uh, actually called only by the spring ioc container and this class then this car class uh, could not be used outside the spring so that is a, a thing that we have to remember here 
So <clears throat> let's say that uh, this auto wired setter method is uh, actually pointed as not required and make it required equals false. So now what will happen? So with constructors, the IOC container had to uh, call one of the constructors. Now there is no way it has to call one of them. But with the setter methods, uh, when it is required as true, it, it will try to satisfy all the parameters like, like the constructor, you know, it is the same as the constructor. But if it fails to satisfy at least one of them, you know, let's say that the engine is not a component and the Spring IOC container does not know how to instantiate it and provide an object. So now it will fail because we have uh, marked, is it, marked it as required and Spring will try to actually find an engine, you know, it, it qualifying bean definition for the engine, but there is none. But if we uh, actually change it to false, then then it will ignore that function. You know, it will first try to satisfy it, but because this time uh, at least one of them is not uh, is not having at least bin definition in, in the IOC container, then it then the uh, IOC container won't call it at all. You know, it won't pass a null value here. We will talk about passing null values and asking and telling the IOC container that the null value is okay in the next sessions. But now uh, it only will try to satisfy it by providing an instance off of one of these being definitions. And there are none here for the engine. So it will fail. And so, as I said, we could have as many as uh, setter methods and we could, you know, the being required as false or true doesn't matter uh, in, in their order of uh, being called, you know. It will call all of the auto-wired setter methods, no matter if they are required or not, but it will uh, ignore the ones that have at least one parameter that is not satisfiable. But if we... Uh, change it to true as required, as you see it, it will, it will fail. Okay, that was uh, another uh, point and tip here. And one other thing that I want to mention with setter methods is that with constructors, uh, if you want to ask for all the dependencies, you saw all its benefits, you know, we could make the private finals and also uh, you could actually fully construct the instance before uh, handing it to others. But if, when we have uh, more than, let's say three or four dependencies, and when we want to ask all of them from the constructor, especially in language like Java that has not the feature of named parameters, uh, actually some problems might occur like the pyramid the pyramid onto pattern or it might be blotted actually you know having a constructor with 10 dependencies with 10 parameters is hard to maintain and call you know so in that case the setter method would be a solution you know we could provide a bunch of setters for each dependency at least for those of them that we we know that for this car, this this class is okay to not be instantiated, you know, because those one that are asked from the constructor, we we are insisting that all of them should be there, you know, ready. But the setter methods, as we said before, has this a uh, flaw that you might forget to annotate it at auto wired, or you might forget to pass. And, and create a bean definition. And so so then this IOC container won't be able to call the setter method and it will pass instances of this car object that are half constructed. And that is the problem. So these are the trade-offs of using uh, these injection points. 
And yeah, that is the setter method, the setter injection point with the auto wired annotation.